this better work out. This was Tammy's idea. If she messes up my walk, yep, she's going the wrong direction already. All right. Marcy is such a chicken. She likes to walk down the middle of the road. I mean, she is a middle of the road dog. But when somebody comes along, she gets behind me. <laughs> She's a little fraidy cat. Yeah, I never thought I'd have a dog like that. Uh, you know, growing up, we had outside dogs. Um, you know, they never came in. You know, we would never let a dog in the house. There's just no way in the world. Now, we loved our dogs. We had one dog when I was a kid. Uh, his name was Festus. Um, if you ever watched the show Gunsmoke, uh, you know who Festus was. So, our dog was Festus. We had a bulldog. Uh, but, uh, anyway, and we had a lot of dogs. We had a lot of different dogs. Um, and, you know, they would live a variety of times. <laughs> a variety of amounts of time. You know, because, you know, we lived out in the country and they'd get run over and bit by stuff and whatever. So, you kind of go through dogs. So, you know, the idea of having a, you know, little, come on. The idea of having a little inside dog was kind of weird. Comes a bike. Comes a bike, Marcy. What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna go? <laughs> Woo, that spooked her. I had a section clipped out of my video yesterday, so I gotta fill this in. I was talking about Marcy and I said, I wonder if she gets sore. Uh, when I was walking her and then I started talking about uh, how we didn't stretch before we did our walk and then I started talking about well you know when I was coaching we used to say well you never see a deer stretch um, and you don't see a deer stretch you don't see dogs or deer stretch so I don't know if they just don't need to stretch uh, or how that works but anyway that was the section that got cut out I was talking about whether or not Marcy stretches or whether or not she needed to stretch. And I didn't ask her if she was sore the next day. She looked kind of sore though. She probably was sore. <laughs> One year they made me the girls soccer coach. And I had coached girls sports before. Uh, so that wasn't the first time I'd coached girls. But most of the uh, girls soccer players were cheerleaders. For some reason all cheerleaders decided they were going to play girls soccer. Come on girl. So anyway. We get out there. About the first day, and we start doing our stretches. Man, I turn around and I look down. You know, you do the stretches where, you know, you have to put your, you know, you got your legs on the ground and you put your head down on your legs. I looked around, and every one of them girls had their heads like all the way down on the ground. I'm like, why are we stretching? None of these girls need to stretch. Every one of them is so limber, they can touch the ground with their head and do all these splits and all this crazy stuff. We quit stretching. We just started doing some warm up running. <laughs> and we'd always fuss over who had to do the stretching. Like in football, if you had seven or eight coaches, you didn't want to be the one that had to do the stretching. You had to be mean. You had to either you had to be really mean to do the stretches, or you had to be like so upbeat and so happy and so inspiring. You could just get everybody to stretch because nobody, boys, none of them like to the stretch. We hated, I hated stretching. The stretching's what made me sore. It wasn't the running and the hitting. I went to a football clinic one time and one of the guys that was speaking was Hal Mummy and he was the head football coach at Kentucky. And he told us that he was actually doing a clinic about pre-practice and what you do before practice starts. Of course, everybody stretches. So he gets up there and he starts talking about what all they did. And somebody raised their hand and they said, well, when do y'all stretch? He goes, oh, we don't stretch. And they were all like, oh, what? what? Man, that's a Division One football. They don't stretch. And he told them, he said, listen. He said, we had like, you know, athletic trainers. And we asked the athletic trainers how long it took to stretch. Because we kept having all these pulled muscles. We're like, why do we keep having all these pulled muscles? And they're like, well, we're not loose. 
And he's like, well, my God, how much more stretching do we need to do? I mean, we're already stretching 20, 30 minutes. And the guy said, well, it'd take about 45 minutes to be able. And he's like, well, good night. We got all these restrictions about how many hours a week we can practice. He said, and if we stretch for 45 minutes every day before practice, he said, that'll take four or five hours worth of practice. He said, we're not stretching anymore. He said, what difference does it make? We're still pulling muscles. He said, so we just started doing some warm up, running and jogging around and stuff. And he said, we didn't have any more muscles getting pulled than we did when we stretched. So we just quit stretching all together. I wonder how many people do that now. Oh, I think this is kind of stressing her out. You know, animals, dogs in particular, are supposed to relieve stress. What happens when your dog gets stressed out? Think she needs to think. Maybe I should get her like a uh, therapy animal, a therapy pet, like another dog that could help her with her stress relief, a therapy dog for the dog. Maybe you could get a smaller animal, like a therapy uh, rodent, you know, something really small. And that could be her therapy. Well, she's definitely not a hunter. Because we just walked within about 10 feet of a rabbit. <laughs> I saw it before she did. Just walked within about 50 feet of a deer. She didn't bark at that either. She barks at home all day long. I don't know what she's barking at there. Of course, uh, if she's a hunter... I'm probably thinking about this wrong. She's a real hunter. She probably wouldn't bark at the deer or bark at the rabbit because she'd want to sneak up on them. So she probably, she is, she is a good, she's a good hunting dog. She really is. Because a big doe like the one I just saw would feed a peekapoo for a long time so she pretty much handled that the right way plus she's by herself you know dogs roam in packs so since she's just with me she's just thinking you know i gotta be quiet stealthy uh don't let this deer know i'm here you know and then i you know me i speak the deer so she's probably disappointed in me and here I am feeling like I'm disappointed in her. She's the one that should feel disappointed in me for spooking the deer that she was going to kill. <laughs>